I just shot a little son of a bitch in my house. You did what? I just shot somebody. You shot someone? Yes, I did. Where are you at? May 10th, 2018, Oakwood, Ohio, a 73-year-old man calls 911 and tells the dispatcher that, well, listen for yourselves. 15648 Road 1037. Okay, why did you shoot someone? I told him to get the hell out of my house and he didn't leave. Who, who is it to you? What? Who is he to you? He's my wife's grandson. Your wife's grandson? I need a damn ambulance! Okay, is he alive? Is he breathing? Yeah. You get a, I need Okay, an where did you shoot him at? Huh? I don't know. I shot him in the chest, I think. You shot him in the chest? Yes. Okay. Did you shoot him with a shotgun or a pistol? A pistol. Okay. What's your name? William Miller. William Miller? Yeah. Okay. okay, was he being aggressive or anything to you, William? Yeah. Okay, what was he doing to you? I told him to get the hell out of my house. I didn't want him here. He wasn't welcome here to get out. Okay. And he refused to leave, so I shot his sorry little okay. ass. What, what is his name? Evan Holcomb. Evan Holdem? Holcomb. Holcomb? Will you please send an ambulance? Yep, Did I tell you all this? William, we're sending one. My other dispatcher is encoding them right now, okay? All right. Um, I, I have deputies in route two. I just need you to stay on the line for me until they get there, okay? What? I, I just need you to stay on the phone with me. Do you guys... Is he bleeding? Okay, William, I understand. I, I'm concerned about him right now. Is he bleeding? Oh, hold on a second. You here, talk here, to my wife. Oh, my God. Oh, okay. Oh, my God. Hello. Okay, ma'am, hi. Yes. Is, is he breathing? Is he still alive? Um, he's just making moaning sounds. Okay, do you do you see where the gunshot is no, on his chest? I can't move when he's on his, like his hands and he's curled up. Okay, he's curled up. Please, send somebody. Okay, yep, we're, we are. We have ambulance en route, and we have deputies en route. I just need some more information from you guys, oh okay? I, I'm really sorry that this happened. We just need some information, okay? Oh, my God. What he? What kind of gun? Is it a revolver? I don't a, know. I was on okay. handy time. I was in the okay. bathroom. Okay. What's your name, ma'am? Deborah Miller. Deborah Miller? Okay. Yes. Oh my God! Okay, okay. I I know Deborah. I'm really sorry. Did you? Oh, what? Can Can you let William know that when the deputies get there, he needs to follow the deputies' instructions very carefully? Okay, because okay. it's a really serious matter. With their, okay. They are gonna come with. Seven. Do, it's made the moan. Okay. You can't get you can't get him to see where where the wound is to maybe uh, no, stop the bleeding. Talk, and I okay. can't see too okay. big. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, I'm handicapped. I, I understand. I, I understand. I gotta find a chair. I understand. Hold on a minute. Okay, you're fine. You gotta come here. Oh my god. Oh my god. You still Wait. there, Deborah? Wait. Hold on, I'm gonna give my granddaughter to you. Okay, how many yeah. people calm down, you gotta talk to her. Right. Hey, Deborah. Oh. Hi, hi, honey. Where where's William? Where's William at? I don't know where he went. Did he go outside? I think so. Okay, is there a vehicle on the property that he can leave with? 
A speed boat, yeah. Okay, do you know what that vehicle is? It's the white Buick. White Buick? Okay. It has a lift on the back for, like, the wheelchair. Lift on the back? Okay, do you th did he say anything about leaving or anything? No, he just, I don't know if he even left. I don't. Okay, okay, that's that's okay. I know. It's, how, what, what's your name, sweetie? Crystal. Crystal? He didn't leave you. Okay, Crystal, can you please do me a favor and can you please just let William know that when the deputies get there, he needs to follow the deputies' instructions very carefully, okay? Okay. Because they're, they're gonna they're gonna come. It's a very serious matter, and he needs to follow their instructions so no one else gets hurt. They said that you have to follow their instructions very carefully. You have to follow them step by step when they get here. I I know it's really I know it's really scary. My cousin's dead. Crystal, do you know if he still has the gun? Do you know if he still has it or if he got rid of the gun? Where's, where's the gun at? Where's the gun at? It's in the bedroom. It's in the bedroom. Is it unload? Did he unload it? I have no idea, but he's not going to shoot anybody. Okay, okay. He is is he wanting to harm himself? Is he is William okay? He doesn't want to harm himself. He's fine. I think he knows he must. Okay. Okay. No, All right. Normal. He, he wouldn't leave. He wouldn't get out of the house. Okay. I, okay. I understand. I understand. Is there anyone else in the house besides you and your grandma and, and William? And no, I think my cousins are on the way. My grandma told okay. me to call them. Okay. All right. <laughs> hold, hold on for me, Crystal. I'm going to talk to my units real quick, okay? okay. Just, just don't hang up. Uh, 6300 to all units. William is aware that he needs to follow your instructions. He has put the gun away in the bedroom, and he did say he is not wanting to harm anyone else. He knows he messed up. On the phone, telling him to wait till we stop and then get the front door and we'll follow our cam. 10, you're clear. Okay, Crystal, when the deputies get there, I am going to have you give the phone to William if you can let him know that. So that way I can let him know the instructions of what the deputies want him to do, okay? Okay. Can, can you let him know that for me, please? Yeah, so when they get here, you want me to give the phone to him? Yep, it, to yep if you would like. Yep. After this is all over, then somebody come and pick me up, please. Crystal, if if you want to, when, when you give the phone to William, do you have your own cell phone? Yeah. Okay. Honey, they're, they're probably going to want you to stay there for right now just so they can get your version of the story, okay? I, I know that's going to be really okay. hard to do right now, but... Yep, um, they're they're probably gonna want to talk to everybody. How do you? Can you see Evan? Do you know what's going on with Evan right now? He, he, my grandpa shot him. I'm not sure if he shot him in the living room or the kitchen, but he fell okay. on the floor. Okay. Your your grandma said she's handicapped and isn't able to check on Evan. And I, if you're not comfortable doing that, I don't want you to do that. I know he's dead. She's in the kitchen next to him on the chair, and he's okay. got talking a long time ago. Okay, he, he, Evan, Evan hasn't talked or anything. No, my grandma, I think, budgeted him or tried to move him, but he's not breathing. Okay, he, he's not breathing. You, you, you noticed so. that? My grandma said he wasn't. Okay, all right. I'm in the backyard right now. Can okay, that's it? fine. Yep, you, you can stay back there. That's fine. They're going to get there quick for you, okay? I, They're... I hear them. I'm going to go tell my grandpa. Okay. Yep, that's fine. You can do that for me. Call your dad and tell him to get his ass over here.
Hello. Hi, William. Yeah. Okay, if you want to just keep the phone until the deputies get there, um, I, I think is what they're going to have you do just so that way nobody else gets hurt is they're just going to have you go to the front door, and then when I tell you, you can open the door and meet the deputies with your hands in the air, okay? I'm be sitting out in the garage having a cigarette. Okay, that that's fine for right now. We just, you know, we don't want anybody else getting hurt or anything. So, so as soon as they get there, and I'll let you know, and and we can have you go out. Is the garage door open? Yeah. The the big door or the little door? The little door. I'm just. <sighs> okay. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna let my deputies know that you are out in the garage sitting down. Okay. Yeah, the, I, the gun is in the bedroom. Okay, Th thank you for at least putting the gun away. I appreciate that. Yeah. 6310, just be advised that William is sitting in the garage, and he is aware that he is supposed to come out with his hands up when you guys arrive. <clears throat> oh, they're here. There, okay, you see him. Okay. Don't. Hold on a second. Okay. Um, William, Gary, Deputy Dietrich said to go ahead and come out of the garage with your hands up, okay? You can leave the cell phone in your hand. Just just put your hands up so they can see, okay? Here. They are there. Deputies arrive at the home at around 9.38 p.m. and find 19-year-old Evan Holcomb dead inside of the home with a gunshot wound to the chest. According to police, William Miller admitted to an investigating deputy that he shot Evan in the chest after he fired a warning shot into the ceiling. William's granddaughter, Crystal, said that she heard William and the grandson arguing, then heard two shots. What they were actually arguing about is still unknown. Evan and William also lived in the same home. William Miller was taken into custody and charged with aggravated murder. According to a county sheriff named Jason Landers, William Miller died four months later in a Toledo hospital. Landers said he died of natural causes. Baltimore City, 911, page 1323. There's an explosion, something just blew up, something just something. We on Virginia Avenue, um, part off of Woodlawn. In Park Heights, I don't know. We need okay, everybody to come out here. There's a police car out here right now. There's a police car out. October 10th, 2020, Northwest Baltimore. Multiple 911 calls are made after people from a neighborhood hear loud explosions just blocks away from their own homes. One of the neighbors who called 911 from the 4600 block of Lanier Avenue said she heard a big boom. Then, when she looked outside, the top of a house across the street was, and quote, blown up the top. Smoke everywhere. Okay. They need ambulance for everything. Just team. please call somebody. What's, oh what's my your God. location? Uh, we just heard a big boom and we looked outside the top of the house across the street, across the little pathway is blown up at the top and I think it's on fire. Okay, just stay online, but I'm putting a request in for the paramedics. Daddy, please come get us. Daddy, come get us now. I don't know what's going on around here, but come get us now. Is anyone injured, ma'am? Ma'am, I don't know I'm in my house. Oh, my gosh. This cannot be real. This is like you see in an uh, action movie. What the hell? Oh, my gosh. Yo, I'm shaking so bad. I, I can't even stand up. All right, stand around with me, Miss Bird. Oh, my gosh. It's, oh, 
It's a house on fire. Okay. Oh, my God. All right. We're getting it's in there, okay? The trees by my house. We're getting help out there, okay, Ms. Bird? Baltimore City, 911, so I'll just name the address of the emergency. Yes, uh, there was some sort of explosion. I'm, I, you might need to transfer me to Baltimore County because I'm at the city county line. Where did you, what was the location? Okay, yeah, that's Baltimore City. It goes that my house is in the county. And what type of explosion did you hear? It just was a boom, and it, sh it rattled my windows. I see my neighbors are down the road. They all came out of their house, so obviously they heard it too. Okay, you don't see any smoke or flames or anything? Uh, no, I no. don't. Okay. All right. So I'm going to Something happened out here. Right. It, it just was something I've, I've never even experienced. I've been out here for over 20 years. So uh, this is it's scary. It's scary. Okay. All right. And you don't see any damage or anything, right? No. Do you hear a bursting or hissing sound? No. No. Okay. All right. Um, and has anyone complained about an unusual odor? I don't know. I'm in my house working. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's Boom, just went off, and so I just like somebody needs to come check this out. Okay, all right, so I've already sent the fire department um, out there so that we can see what's going on, okay? Um, we'll get someone there. Baltimore City, 911, about five houses just blew up. Okay, repeat the location and make sure I have it correct. I'm about five houses blew up just now. Is it still in the 4200 block? Yes. I'm sending them while okay. I'm talking to you. All right. You said it was an explosion? Yes. Is anything burning? No, it's all gone. The houses are gone. They're gone. Okay, is anyone trapped inside the debris? Or you're not I, sure? I have no idea. I just okay, that's okay. Down the street. okay. Okay, that's all right. I smelled gas when I went to the store. And did you hear a bursting or hissing yeah, sound? Yeah, it blew all our windows, yeah. Okay, all is anyone injured or you're not sure? We're not sure. We can't see down okay. there. Did you see anyone or anything suspicious? No. Okay, no problem. And I am sending the fire department to help now. Okay. Stay on the line, and I'll tell you exactly what to do next. Do not touch or pick up anything. Do not use, turn on, or turn off any additional electrical devices. If it's mm -hmm. safe to do so, keep all bystanders away from the area and assign someone to guide the emergency crews to the general area. Please do not approach or enter any hazardous or dangerous areas. I'm going to let you go now. Help is on the way. If Thank anything you. worsens in any way, call us back immediately for further instructions. Thank you. All right. One more city, 911. You see your house blew up across the street. Two of them look like. Three, maybe. Okay, what's the street name? Labyrinth Road. And you said this is a home, business, or apartment? Houses. House. Three houses exploded. Three houses exploded? And it knocked everybody else glass and doors off in the neighborhood. Um, yep, I didn't. I just came outside and saw it when um, our windows and, and doors come shattering in. So, yes, I, I assume at the same time. Okay, are you at that location now? I'm across the street. All right, is anything burning? I smell gas. You, wait, you said you smell gas? Mm-hmm. All right, let me add that one moment. Here come, here, come, here come one come down the street, emergency vehicle. Is anyone trapped? I think so. You said you think so? I'm pretty sure I heard somebody hollering. Okay, how many? I had no idea. The whole house is down. Now, can you ex describe the extent of the damage? The whole three, like three whole houses, maybe more, tumble down. All you see is the break. Has anyone complained of an unusual odor? The gas, the smell of gas. All right, is anyone injured? I'm pretty sure there is. It's three houses. Somebody was in some of them. Somebody was hollering. Okay. I was heard screaming. Now, did you see anyone or anything suspicious? No. All right, I'm sending the fire department help you now. Stay on the line. I'll tell you exactly what to do next. Do not touch or pick anything up. Do not try to put the fire out. Do not use, turn on, or turn off any additional electronic devices. Okay. If it's safe to do so, keep all bystanders away from the area. Assign someone to guide the emergency crews to the general area. I'm going to let you go now. Help is on the way. If anything worsens in any way, call us back immediately for further instructions. Okay. Right. Okay, thank you. The explosion killed two people and was caught in a ring cam.
One of the victims was a woman whose identity was not disclosed. The second victim was 20-year-old Morgan, a state university student who was found in the rubble. The explosion also seriously injured seven other people and left 30 others with nowhere to go. Baltimore City Mayor Bernard C. Jack Young called the explosion something I've never ever witnessed in my lifetime and called on the city to pray for and continue to help those affected. City Council President Brandon Scott said that neighbors rushing to the scene and pulling residents from the rubble showed the true spirit of Baltimore. Five months after the explosion, records show that a buildup of natural gas occurred and was ignited when a stove was turned on. The Baltimore City Fire Department said that work was being done on customer equipment by a licensed contractor in the basement of 4232 Lambreth Road. With no evidence of a Baltimore City permit, no lawsuits and no arrests have yet been made. The fire department released its findings on the explosion and fire on Labyrinth Road. It was the result of a large natural gas buildup. Based on the investigation and evidence, it appears as though a stove was turned on, which provided the ignition source. The fire chief says investigators examined four gas meters and discovered an early morning spike in natural gas levels at the house at 4232 Labyrinth. A licensed contractor had been working on the HVAC system in the basement of that home the day before. So far, investigators have found no work permits for that address. March 15th, 2008, Manhattan, New York. A man was sitting in his living room of a second story one bedroom apartment when he heard a rumble coming from above. Minutes later, he makes a disturbing 911 call. Operator 1152 is the emergency. Hello, please help me, please. I'm building for us. I'm in here. Please help me. Please, please, please. Sir, hello. Please. I can't understand you. You have to stop crying. Hello. Hello. Sir, what bedroom are you in? Are you in the house? Yes, I'm in the house. Okay, what bedroom are you in? I'm in the bedroom. Okay, what bedroom are you in? 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 Okay, an 11,000 pound tower crane fell across East 51st Street, demolishing the building into rubble. Seven citizens who lived in that building lost their lives and injuring 11 others. Luckily, John Gallegos, the person who made that disturbing 911 call, survived. He's had five surgeries since the incident and now uses a cane to get around. This devastating tragedy was no accident, but rather faulty and poorly done work by a contractor. Prosecutors say William Rapetti used badly worn slings to support the mast of the crane while it was being raised and failed to follow city and federal guidelines for inspecting the slings and rigging them. William Rapetti was arraigned in court on numerous counts of manslaughter, criminally negligent homicide, assault, and other charges. Prosecutors say he and his rigging firm were so negligent, so reckless, that the March 15th crane collapse that killed seven was no accident. But according to an article by Desiree News, William Rapetti was acquitted on all criminal charges and stripped of his licenses. Buildings Commissioner Robert Lemondry said in a statement, The license revocation bars William Rapetti from running any cranes or overseeing their assembly in the city. And Marianne Bertuna, Rapetti's lawyer, said that she was very disappointed in the decision and thinking about fighting it in court to try to get Rapetti back to the work he's done since he was 17. And John Gallegos, who now lives with his mother said he was not angry about the not guilty verdict and hoped that someone would eventually admit to wrongdoing in the tragedy. He also said, I put my faith in New York law. I hope that good final was responsible. Other players were involved in the incident beyond Rapetti. The city was involved. Another company was involved. If you make a mistake, I want them to take responsibility, admit the responsibility. January 25th, 2021, Kingston, Tennessee. An employee from Tiger Haven, Inc., which is a nonprofit sanctuary for big cats, calls 911 and pleads to the dispatcher for some urgent help. Round County, 911. I need an ambulance at Tiger Haven, 237 Harvey Road, Kingston, right away. What's going on? 
Uh, somebody got grabbed by one of the tigers. Where did they need to go there? Wait, beg your pardon? Where did they need to go there in the property? Come to the main entrance. Come to the main entrance. Okay, I'll meet them at the main entrance. Injured. If she's injured badly, they're screaming on the radio to call for an ambulance. I don't know. I wasn't there. Okay. Please hurry. What's your name, sweetie? My name is... Okay, so we'll get somebody out there, okay, hon? Okay, hurry. All right, sweetie. All right. Thank you. Thank you. A tiger named Eeyore attacked an 18-year-old woman and caused extensive injury to her right arm. The woman, who said she lived and worked at the Big Cat Sanctuary, told wildlife officers she was changing the water of the tiger when she lost her footing in the mud and her hand went through a grate on the side of the cage. In her interview with TWRA officers, the victim said the tiger was normally not aggressive. Well, what was his name? I was only Eeyore. Eeyore? Okay. Is he grumpy? No, he's actually not a mean cat. It was just time for him to eat. And he saw something he could eat. The woman is recovering from her injuries and no information was given on what happened to the tiger. In a photo, workers supposed to show perspective in the distance between the water bowl and the site of the attack. And according to its website, Tiger Haven is currently home to 265 big cats including tigers, lions, leopards, cougars, and jaguars. They also house 11 smaller cat species which include several bobcats and lynx. Tiger Haven is licensed by the state to legally keep the animals. An employee told Rome County deputies that the the facility had never before had a tiger attack. Nobody had a plan for if anything was to happen. Very, very chaotic. People were running around, screaming. It was just crazy. Tiger Haven's lawyer did not respond to a request for comment. <laughs> The founder told us last year the facility has nearly 300 big cats, mostly tigers. Nine employees feed them truckloads of meat. Eeyore the tiger had not eaten for two days. Just my clumsiness. An 18-year-old's arm now mangled, grabbed by one of the planet's top predators. Reporting from Rome County, I'm Cole Sullivan. It is unclear what happened to the tiger in question. The lawyer for that woman says she's had five surgeries to keep her arm, but may never get its full use back. Hall County 911, what is the address of your emergency? 2076 Memorial Park Drive. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. What's your address? 2076 Memorial Park Drive at Gainesville. Is that compact? Yes, it is. Okay, and the phone number you're calling from? Okay, tell me exactly what's happened. January 28th, 2021, Gainesville, Georgia. In this first call, a man who identifies himself as a plant director for Foundation Food Group tells a dispatcher that someone has potentially been sprayed by liquid nitrogen. Um, I'm the director of the plant here. I see a lot of people moving outside. I got a phone call from one of my employees saying that I've got a person who could potentially be uh, frozen from liquid nitrogen. We run nitrogen freezers here. Like they're threatening him? I'm sorry? They're threatening him with liquid nitrogen? No, I, I'm hearing that he might have been sprayed by it. I, I don't know. Okay, so he needs an ambulance. Yes. And we're at the rear of the facility. Okay. How old is he? Uh, low 20s. Are you with him now? I, I'm not. I was notified to get some help over here. I don't know anything past that. Okay, hold on. I can't see anything else going on. Right, okay. All right. Make sure somebody's out there to flag them down, okay? 
Okay. All right, what was your name? Zach Hoover. All right, we're getting somebody out there. Thank you. Thank you. Minutes later, a second 911 call is made by one of the workers and pleads with the operator to send EMTs to the backside of the plant where the injured people are located. Call County 911, what's the address of your emergency? Hello, Hall County 911. Hall County 911, if you have an emergency and cannot speak. I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm at Prime Pack 2076 Memorial Park Drive, Gainesville. Yes, sir. I've already called 911. I've got multiple people affected by liquid nitrogen. Yes, sir. We've got additional units coming to you. Are the responders with you? What What can I do with someone who's been affected? Okay, there should be responders there. Can you direct them to where you are? I do not see any responders here. We have people there. Where are you? To the back of the plant. Okay, we're at in the back of the plant. I'm looking for them now. Okay. I don't see anybody. In the rear of the facility. Okay, we've got people there, and we've also got multiple more units coming to you guys due to multiple patients. Can you tell they me? They need to be at the rear of the facility. Okay, is that where all of the patients are? Yes. Okay, I'm going to tell them that. If you can send someone to flag them down. I'm here. Okay, they'll be there as soon as they can, okay? Okay. What can I do with someone who's been affected? You'll have to flag them down. Yes. Can you run to the front and flag them down? Are you still there? Yes, I am. Let me know when they get with you, okay? I hear the sirens. I don't see anybody. How many patients are there? At least four. At least four? Is everybody conscious yeah. and breathing? One of them is not. I've got one who's on his side. Okay. Is he breathing? Is, is he breathing? He's breathing. He's struggling, though. All right. Let's get him flat on his back. He's flat, 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 flat on his back. Okay. Tell me exactly what you see or hear him doing. He's foaming at the mouth, eyes are open, struggling. I see some firemen inside. He's, he's breathing very slowly. He's breathing very slowly. Okay, we've got you help coming. I'm sorry. We've got you help coming, okay? They'll be there as soon as they okay. can. Just stay on the phone with me. All right. Kind of running back and forth. I've got one here. Okay, at this time, is everybody safe and out of danger? I don't know. Okay. Is he breathing? I've got two people not breathing. I've got one barely breathing. Okay. I see one fireman here. I don't see any EMTs. I haven't seen anyone come up to the back of the plant. I'm on the phone with them. They're not. I'm trying to flag them down. I don't see anybody. There's firemen in there. Okay, sir, are you still there? In the cooler. There's two firemen in the cooler. Can they come in here? I've got four people He's down. I don't responders. see anybody here. He's talking to responders. Okay, so are they with you now? Some of them are. Yeah, I don't see any EMTs. Okay, is anybody working on the subject that is not breathing? No. Okay, no let's get him on. flat on his back. I need you to go to him. We need to give him our attention, okay? Everyone's flat on their back. I'm okay. talking to EMTs. What can we do with the people that are being dealt with right now? Okay, the one that is definitely not breathing, let's go to him first, okay? Hi, I'm, okay, this is Ryan. I got three unconscious on the deck. Uh, 
Uh, and I, one, one doesn't have a pulse. Uh, okay, let's get him flat on his back. Place both hands on the center of his chest bone. Okay, are you with him now? Okay, I got one that's breathing with a pulse. I got two that do not have a pulse. Okay, are you safe to touch these patients? I am. I got people, I get the paramedics are coming right now. Okay, are you safe to touch these patients or is the chemical still on them? Okay, it's not a chemical, it looks like it's liquid nitrogen. Okay, listen carefully. This could be very dangerous. Do not touch the patients at all. Let the paramedics handle it, okay? I understand that. They're still trying to evacuate okay. more people out. And I heard you send someone to flag them out. down. Do you see that person? Do what? I, I heard you send someone to flag them down. Did you, do you see them or responders at this time? Okay, we, we pulled these people out. Okay. And I've got two that are... They're, they're cold. It feels like they're gone. I got one that's uh, body temperature quite cold. It seems like she's bleeding. It's not a little bit. Okay, besides the four obvious patients, has anybody else been affected? Uh, yes, we got two more coming out now. Oh, God, thank you. So that'll be six in total? They were frozen. Okay, are you able, can you evacuate the plant, please? Hey, hey, plants already evacuated. That's been done, ma'am. Okay, we need you to go outside, okay? Just yeah, for your safety. Everybody's outside. Everybody's, Everybody's outside, okay. All right, I'm going to get you back to play, ma'am. A total of six people lost their lives and 11 others were injured. Kathleen Limos, chair and CEO of U.S. Chemical Safety and Hazard Investigation Board, said that unplanned maintenance was happening on the production line where the liquid nitrogen was released. Major portions of the liquid nitrogen system, both interior and exterior, were installed in the last four to six weeks. She said tools were also reported found around the new equipment, a discovery she says the board is looking into. She said the incident occurred on the four or five production lines at the plant. Processing on line 4 included poultry seasoning, cooking, and flash freezing, and liquid nitrogen is used to flash freeze the chickens. The investigation into what actually caused the leak is still unknown, and as to what happened to the injured employees who were left out of work, Louis Kendall from The Guardian wrote an article stating that a coalition of organizers, attorneys, and community members claims that since the fatal incident, workers have been discriminated against and intimidated by the company while attempting to file compensation claims and obtain medical care. Some workers had been asked to sign blank sheets of paper after returning to the plant to collect their belongings. According to a letter sent by the Coalition to Foundation Food Group, the letter also claims the company is impending employees' access to health care. A spokesperson for Foundation Food Group wrote in a statement to The Guardian, The company has received the letter. The company has not taken any action to intimidate employees or limit their access to benefits in any way. The Foundation Food Group case is still under scrutiny. What's going on there? I I had my gun and I pulled the trigger and I didn't realize there was a June 10th, 2017, Hobart, Indiana. A man who seems to be in a complete panic calls 911 and tells the dispatcher that he's just committed an unforgivable mistake. I didn't realize there was a bullet in there and I just shot my daughter. Oh God. Okay. Oh my God, no. Do you want to oh try to do CPR? I, I just, yeah, I know CPR. Do you want to try it? Oh, oh. oh my God. Oh, my God. Hello? Yes, I'm here. Should I press on her chest? I'm sorry? Press on her chest? Yes. she got blood, man, everywhere. I understand that. I'm getting the fire department. Man, ambulance and police officers on the way right now. Okay, I can hear the siren, so they're coming. I hear. Oh my God! Hey, boys, make sure that back door is open, okay? I was gonna say, if you yell down to your sons to open the door and help them come up here. I mean, oh my God! Just continue, try to continue doing the chest compressions until they get there, all right? Oh, my God. What's your name, sir? 
Upstairs, please. All right, go ahead, here, man. go ahead and hang up and let them take over. Okay, okay. Right. bye. Right. Officers responded to the call in the 100 block of East 10th Avenue. They found Olivia Hummel lying unresponsive with a gunshot wound to the head. An officer found no pulse but did try and do chest compressions. Olivia was taken to St. Mary Medical Center where she died at 5.25 p.m. according to the Lake County Coroner's Office. An autopsy did not rule on the cause and manner of her death due to pending further investigation. Records show Eric Hummel was showing his gun to his two sons and told them not to play with it because it can kill. At the time, the weapon was unloaded, but according to Hummel, he forgot he had reloaded the gun just minutes before. He then tells his boys never use a gun and this is why, before he pointed it at his daughter who had just walked into the room and shot her in the head. When Hummel called his wife to tell her what happened, she dropped the phone and started screaming. The charges against Eric Hummel are still pending. The most recent update that I could find was on the Chicago Tribune. Hummel pleaded not guilty to charges of neglect of a dependent resulting in death. Battery resulting in death to a person less than 14 years old, reckless homicide and two counts of neglect of a dependent. Neglect of a dependent resulting in death, the highest level charge that the defendant faces is a level 1 felony. It carries a prison sentence of 20 to 40 years. If anyone has more information about this case, please leave a comment below. I'd like to know the one for the C679 with the address of the emergency. Oh, we need an ambulance. Oh, somebody is laying out. Somebody, I don't know if he, he barely. Let me connect you. He said somebody just threw him out of the car. Let me connect you to the ambulance. Huh? He not, he still trying to fight for his life. December 10th, 2020, Atlanta, Georgia. A woman calls 911, saying she saw a white SUV driving by with a man hanging out the car. She says she eventually saw the man get shoved out onto the street with serious injuries. EMS, what's the address of the emergency? Baby, can y'all please get an ambulance here? This man is dying. He shot in the head. He just yes. took your last breath, man. What street are you on, ma'am? Can you give breath, him the man. give him your location, please, for the ambulance to give him give the guy some I help? Know, uh, what is his address? Man, he man just took his last breath, man. Man, we have help on the way already. Tell me exactly what happened. We don't know. About, me and my sister, we were just walking down the street, and somebody just rolled down the street with a man hanging out the car. They just pushed him out the truck and left him for dead. Ma'am, I thought you said he was shot in the head. Yes, he is shot in the head. They threw him out the car. He just died. He just took his last breath. We have the okay. ambulance already on the way, okay? Okay. And can you tell me what kind of vehicle he was stolen from, please? Um, white. Okay. Okay. Can you tell me what kind of vehicle he was stolen from, please? Um, white. A white car, truck, or SUV? SUV. <laughs> What direction did the SUV yes, go? Yes, his whole body was just hanging out the car. Listen, just stay on the phone. Can you tell me if you saw any of the people that were driving the car, whether they adults no, or kids? Or... They, were driving, they were driving real fast. We okay. seen it. Police officers were dispatched to a location in the 100 block of People Street at about 5.20 p.m. When they arrived, 28-year-old James Adams was lying in the street suffering from a gunshot wound to the head. He was pronounced dead at the scene. A short time later, a second victim, 32-year-old Kevin Wright, arrived at a fire station by a private vehicle suffering from a gunshot wound to the abdomen. Kevin survived his injuries. Atlanta police homicide connected the two shootings and determined that the two crime scenes were related. They they believe gang members drove through a rival gang territory and people inside of the car opened fire onto another vehicle, striking James Adams in the head and Kevin Wright in the abdomen. They ultimately find and identify the suspects, 17-year-old Leroy Pitt and 23-year-old Raymond Boyd, who were both charged. The third suspect, who was also the driver during the shooting, managed to get away. But a month later, he turns himself in. YFN Lucci, a rapper whose real name is Rashawn Bennett, released his latest music video on his Twitter 
Twitter and Instagram pages before surrendering to authorities. Rishon was eventually granted bail and on Monday, February 8th, he was released from Fulton County Jail after posting a $500,000 bond. Initially, he was charged with felony murder, aggravated assault, participation in street gang activity, and possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony. Rayshawn's attorney said, I think it was, uh, the triggering mechanism obviously is the aggravated assaults on their face. One three does not um, in any way allege that Mr. Bent is the perpetrator of aggravated assault or for that matter the party to the crime of aggravated assault um, and, and therefore making one four felony murder as to that allegation impossible. The same thing with one five. Um, his proximity in a vehicle to someone with a gun is not what establishes aggravated assault. Rayshawn Bennett is still due to appear in court, but no dates have been released. Mr. Bennett, because of the COVID crisis, I'm not able to tell you when your next court date will be. You will receive notice of your next court date from this jail. Is there anything further on this case from the state? Nine one one. Where is your emergency? In September 2020, in the Florida Keys, a family who was on vacation were enjoying a snorkeling session in the Sombrero Reef when all of a sudden a shark attacks one of the family members. Immediately, a mother calls 911 and asks for help. Pressure applied. Pressure applied. Pressure. Wrap this towel around him quickly. Are you? Okay. Ma'am, we're getting help out to you. Hold on. Okay. Florida Fish and Wildlife South Region. All agents are currently. Oh my God, we just please stay on the line for the next Here. available agent. This might be Your better. call will be answered in the order it okay, was received. Okay, Marco. She's connecting me. They're getting help. Four mile drive. 
I mean, if you're saying that's the only way to get him help in all marathons. Sure, that's, 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 that's not what I'm saying. I'm, I, we have yeah, SWC I on the line as well. We're getting them out there. We have help and route. Okay, great. So stay on the phone. Is he, is he awake and breathing still? Yes, he's awake and yes, he's breathing. Okay. He's just lightheaded. Is, lightheaded. is the bleeding controlled right now? The bleeding is somewhat controlled. We have, uh, we have, um, it's a big, basically a big chunk taken out of his shoulder. We've got ice, ice. Do you think, do you think we should get to shore? Hold on. People are advising us now we should try to run to shore as opposed to wait. Did, okay. Did someone mention that there was a nurse on board? There's not a nurse on board now. Okay. Excuse but it's me? a gaping wound, and I, we could run. It's a 20-minute run back to Zamora Beach if you think that's safer, but we need to act right away. I just need your guidance on what to do. Stay here so late or if, drive in. Yeah, if you can, head into shore, and we have EMS there waiting. The thing is, we At just Zimbabwe don't have Beach, any Marines. At Zimbabwe Beach? Zimbabwe Beach, correct. Okay, we're going to do that. We're going to do that then. We're going to – okay. We're going to run to Beach. Yeah. Okay, we're going. We're going to Samara Beach right now. Okay, you guys are heading into the beach? We're, we're starting the boat now to get in. Okay. Okay, you guys are Monroe County. You're going to be stationed at Sombrero Reef. Sombrero Reef. That's the point, right? We're the boat. We need help, Trash. Let's do it. Okay, can we go get the ladder up? Take the ladder up. Back in the back. In the back. In the back. So, so I understand that you guys are going to be en route to Sombrero Reef right now. Yeah, we're starting the boat right now, going to Sombrero Reef. Hey, All right. All righty. You guys, we can all stay on the phone if this is occurring. Let's stay on the phone. Getting... Let's stay on the phone, please. Yeah. Uh, we're getting officers en route as we speak. Okay. Oh, right. Sombrero Reef. Oh, yeah. right, them. Sombrero Reef. Who was that? Reef. Okay, I'm sorry. I just need to confirm. You guys are taking them into Sombrero Beach, the beach? We're going into the beach, Sombrero Beach. Okay, the beach. Okay. Andrew, the victim, was bit by a bull shark as soon as he hit the water. His pregnant wife, Margo, jumps into the water just seconds later to help Andrew fight the shark off. Margo and another person were able to pull him into safety and onto the boat. The group was told to take their boat to Sombrero Beach in Marathon, Florida. Andrew and his family were met by emergency workers who rushed him to the hospital. His injuries to his upper body were said to be severe when he arrived. Since then, Andrew has been recovering. While shark bites are common in some parts of Florida, especially the Central Atlantic coastal areas, shark attacks in the Florida Keys are very rare. According to the University of Florida's International Shark Attack file, there have been just 17 unprovoked shark bites in Monroe County since 1882. However, the bull shark is believed to be the third most aggressive shark, which is the one that attacked Andrew. A frantic woman reporting that her son-in-law, 30-year-old Andrew Eddy, has just been attacked by a shark. It happened in the Florida Keys last week. The story of the attack now gone viral. Officials say Andrew jumped off a boat to be met by a bull shark. And once it clamped down, it started shaking about, took him down under the water. He thought he was going to drown from a lack of oxygen. He said he started punching the shark, just punching on it, punching on it. Short time later, the shark let go. Andrew's pregnant wife, Margot, seen in these new pictures sent to us, jumped in the water to try to help him. Andrew is still recovering in Florida. His wife says they're grateful for the outpouring of support. In a statement, Margot says in part, quote, Andrew is on the road to a full recovery, and we are thankful that the severity of his injuries are not life-threatening. Our family's top priority at the moment is continued progress, protection, and peace for Andrew, me, and her unborn daughter. Margot also posted to her Facebook page saying Andrew will be using his injured arm to hold his baby girl in just six weeks, and that is a miracle. Andrew's injuries are described as severe. Experts say shark bites in the Keys are incredibly rare.